The first client deployment method I'm going to demonstrate is direct push from the Semantic Endpoint Protection Manager. In your console, navigate to Home, then Common Tasks, and select Install Protection Client to Computers. The first option you'll be presented with is to generate a new client installation package at deployment time or go ahead and select an existing package. I'm going to choose the second option and I actually conveniently have the path that set up .exe handy so I'll go ahead and use that. Click next to proceed. What's going to happen now is your CEPM is going to upload that package to an availability location on the CEPM uh, so that your targeted endpoints may retrieve it for installation. As you can see, our package is now uploading. This process is pretty quick and painless. Now we're ready to select our target endpoints. You can see that my local network has been discovered. And I'll go ahead and select a target endpoint. For this scenario, I'm going to use Win7x64 as my target. And when I attempt to move that over to the selection pane, I'm going to be prompted for administrator credentials. Now these can be a local account or a domain account with administrator privileges on your target endpoint. In my case, I'm going to be using a domain account that I know is in the local administrators group. When I click OK, it's going to go ahead and authenticate to that endpoint and verify the architecture for me and let me know that I've selected the appropriate target. I can click Next to proceed. And again, we're just going to confirm that we have the right target by hostname and IP address, the correct operating system and architecture for our target, and notify us that we either do or we don't have a current protection level, meaning CEP is installed or it is not. In our case, we do not currently have any endpoint protection installed. When I click Send, our CEPM is going to go ahead and push that package out to the endpoint. And really what this process is illustrating is the uh, instantiation of a service on the endpoint and then the copying of files down to begin the CEP client installation. And we can see that our deployment summary has confirmed that we were able to connect to that endpoint. And then our deployment status has been given a green check mark. And what this means is basically we were able to connect and copy the installation files down. And now that installation will continue. I can click Next to proceed and then click Finish to close the wizard. The second client deployment method I'm going to demonstrate will be using the Semantic Management Console. As you can see, I'm here in my software catalog, and I'm just going to right-click in the white space on the left-hand side of the screen here. And I'm going to choose Import Software. And I'm going to access this package from an existing UNC. So what I'm going to do is target the same location that I used in the previous example with the direct push from the CEPM console, and simply just grab that same install source here. You can see that I've detected my installation location and it's detected and set the appropriate installation file which is my setup.exe. I'm going to click next to proceed and I'm going to be able to go ahead and uh, populate some information about this software release. Uh, I'm going to title this the semantic endpoint protection client and uh, I could put almost anything in here, but I'll just note that it's version 12. Um, source is sepm1.itslab.cloud, which is my lab environment. And I'm going to go ahead and designate the appropriate vendor for this software. In this case, I'll choose Semantic. And the version will be 12.1.1. I'll click OK and this will open my software resource editor. And what's great about using the Semantic Management Console is once I've created the software resource, it's available to me through for multiple um, deployment options, including package delivery, quick delivery, and managed software delivery. So you can see that the options we populated in the previous step have carried over to our software resource. We have our appropriate uh, Semantic Endpoint Protection Client package designated here, and it's being sourced directly from the location on the CEPM. Uh, so that means when that setup.exe gets replaced by the CEP administrator, we don't need to go back in and repackage our software resource again. It'll just use the most current source on that next installation. 
Uh, for the purposes of this example, I'm not going to set any additional rules or file associations, but you do have that option. So I'll click OK to save our software resource. And if we navigate down to software releases, and I will just search for protection, you'll notice that our client that we just built is now available. And so for our second example, I'm going to try deploying this piece of software a couple different ways. First one I can try is actually a quick delivery. So I'll go ahead and just right click on that resource, go to actions, and then choose quick delivery task. And you can see that all the appropriate options that are defined in the software resource are carried over to creating this instance of the task. And just like in my previous example, I know I want to target my Win 7 x 64 machine. So I'll go ahead and select that. Confirm that it is the correct host name and IP address. Click OK. And that software is now being deployed. And you can see that I'm looking now um, at my software releases view. And I'll go ahead and search for protection again. And we can see, I can see the details here. I don't currently have that software installed. I can also return to my computer's view in the enhanced console view and go look at that individual resource that I've targeted. And we can see that my protection client install is proceeding and running. The third deployment method I want to demonstrate today is again utilizing the Semantic Management Console, but this time instead of a quick delivery, we'll go with a managed software delivery. So you can see that I'm in my Enhanced Console views looking at the software catalog and I'm in software releases. I'm going to go ahead and search for protection again. We can see here's the client package that I created. and I'm going to right click again, go to Actions, but this time I'm going to choose Manage Software Delivery instead of Quick Delivery Task. This is going to put me into a wizard that allows me to configure my managed software delivery. You'll note that the software resource, the appropriate command line, and the package have already been selected for me. Uh, you do have the option in this wizard to install software automatically into a virtual layer where the Semantic Workspace Virtualization Agent is installed. However, we do not recommend this and would not support this for the Semantic Endpoint Protection Client. Since all of my options are already configured, I'm going to go ahead and click Next to proceed. On this screen, I'm going to need to select my target endpoints. So in this case, I know I want to select one individual endpoint, although I would have the ability to target filters that could be based on Active Directory OUs, uh, possibly on like operating systems, or something in an organizational viewer group. In my case, I know I want to target one individual endpoint, so I will apply this to computers. And as we look at our target builder here in the Semantic Management Console, I know that I want to start to filter this down so that I don't inadvertently target additional endpoints that I don't really intend to deploy the software to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to exclude any computers that are not Windows 7. And I do that simply by typing in Windows 7, returning my Windows 7 filter, and then I'm going to click Update Results to see what I get. And you'll notice that instead of all of the available endpoints in my Semantic Management Console, I'm only looking at the 19 that are Windows 7. Now I could proceed from here, but I do want to make sure that I target only this single endpoint just as we've done in our two previous examples. So I will add an additional rule, and I will exclude computers not in, and I'm going to change the selector from filter to computer list. This will allow me to select an individual computer and ensure that's the only one targeted by this managed software delivery policy. So I'll go ahead and start typing the host name of that machine. You'll see that that has been returned. Now I'm going to click the Update Results button again, and we can confirm that only one computer is selected, and only one computer can be targeted by this policy. Click OK to save my target. We'll notice that my target is Windows 7 machines, excluding not in the computer list that I targeted. I'm actually change this drop-down view to Computers, and again I'm just going to confirm that I'm targeting the correct machine by its host name. I can click Next to proceed. And now we're going to select when to deliver this software. Well, the first thing that I want to do is I want to add a schedule to go ahead and ensure 
that the software is installed and if not go ahead and install it and because semantic endpoint protection is relatively important to my organization I want to make sure that I check when the computer starts up and I'm also going to check whenever a user logs in Now I'm going to customize this by looking at the advanced options and there's a couple of things I want to set one I don't want to attempt to reinstall this if they're not connected to a network so I'll check that option and I do want to do this when a user is logged on so I'll select both of those options and hit OK and now I need to decide when to remediate if I'm not compliant with my policy and in this case the policy is checking to ensure that semantic endpoint protection is actually installed and running on that endpoint so since I have no maintenance windows in my lab environment I'm just going to tell it to remediate immediately and then click next to proceed finally with this package although this could be a much more complex software delivery in this case there are no dependencies related to this individual software resource although I could engage in a much more complex deployment if I so choose so the last step here is to go ahead and click deliver software and we'll just go confirm by returning to the computers view and looking at my Win7 X64 machine we'll see that my original quick delivery task is still available there and now let's just confirm that our new managed software delivery policy is there and there we can see semantic endpoint protection client install is targeting this computer the next deployment method I'm going to demonstrate is distributing semantic endpoint protection client using Microsoft's Configuration Manager 2012. Navigate to Software Library and then Packages and you'll see that I've created a couple of folders here organizing by vendor and then my software release. I'm going to create a new package. I can either click on the Create Package button or simply right click in the white space and choose Create Package. I need to give a sensible name to my package um, so in this phase I'm actually going to call it just SEP v12 and then I will add some description here and indicate that this is source from SEPM1, which is the SEPM that I used in the earlier examples with the Semantic Management Console. I'll need to identify that the manufacturer is Semantic, the chosen language is English, and my version is 12.1.1. I now need to add my package source and I'm going to use that by navigating to my UNC path where those sources are shared and click next to proceed I'm deploying a standard program so I'll click next and now I need to provide some information about the program so previously I, I provided some information about the package and now this is the program that I want to identif identify with a little bit more detail so I will call this one semantic endpoint protection client and I will specify my command line which is going to be setup.exe I don't need to specify a startup folder for this application I will go ahead and tell it to run hidden although most of the options for semantic endpoint protection client install are done when you actually export this client into the compressed setup.exe Standard best practice is to choose whether or not a user is logged on. This is important when you do OSD deployments. And then I want to go ahead and make sure that I run it with a UNC name. I can now click Next to proceed. I don't have any programs that I need to run before I run my setup EXE, but I do want to again follow best practice and make sure I ident identify the applicable operating systems to which I may deploy this application and I'll go ahead and select Windows 7, Windows 8, and we'll do Windows Vista and XP, all 64-bit platform which matched the architecture of the SEP client that we exported. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill out these other optional fields. I estimate the size um, of the application as installed at around 500 megabytes, and I'm going to give it 30 minutes to complete the installation, which in my experience is enough for SEP client to be installed and reporting back to the SEPM. After clicking next to proceed, you can see I have a confirmation screen. That all looks good to me, so I'm going to click next again. And now my package and my program have both been created successfully. Click close to dismiss this window, and you'll now see that under endpoint protection, I have a new application or program available. 
Now very simply if I wanted to deploy this application I have a couple of options. I can click deploy up here or I can right click on this program and click deploy down here. Things to know about this in configuration managers rather than targeting an individual endpoint we're going to target a collection. Uh, if you have distribution servers in your environment or multiple level, levels of site servers, you do want to make sure that you go ahead and distribute your content first so that it's available to be deployed. And I'll go ahead and go through that process now. Uh, again, I'm deploying the SEP v12 package. I do know that I want to have some destinations, so I'm going to add my local distribution point. Click next to proceed and close. Now that my content has been staged at distribution points, I'm ready to deploy it. Although there are several mechanisms in the Configuration Manager console to do this, I'm going to choose one of the easiest for the purposes of our example. I have my SEP v12 package selected here, so I'm going to just go up to the ribbon and click on deploy. And in this wizard, I'm just going to need to make a few changes to get my application out there. First, I need to select a collection to which I want to deploy this software. In this example, I've created a collection that contains just one endpoint, and I've named it Software Installation Approved. This is just to let me know as the administrator that it's OK to push this software to the members of this collection. I can click OK to select that collection, and then click Next to proceed. We can see that my distribution point is identified and I'm ready to click next to proceed. In our example, I want to require the installation of semantic endpoint protection, so I'm going to leave the purpose as required. This means that not only will the software be advertised on my managed and targeted endpoints, but they will be required to install it and it will not require user intervention. I'm not going to worry about sending wake on LAN packets nor am I going to worry about a metered internet connection because in my example it's all intranet. I can now click next to proceed and I need to assign a schedule to this deployment. For this example I want to start deploying semantic endpoint protection after business hours on Friday so I can leave that start time as now and I want to complete my deployment before business hours on Monday. So I'm going to change that to start uh, end on Sunday at 5.05 p.m. again and now I need to choose when to assign this schedule to the targeted endpoints. For the purposes of this example, I will leave that as soon as possible. Finally, for my rerun behavior, I don't want to immediately retry this deployment on any endpoints where it fails, so I'm going to choose Never Rerun Deployed Program and click Next to proceed. Finally, I have the option to allow end users to initiate the installation on their own, either before or after the start time, but in this case I'm going to choose to leave that unchecked. And finally, when the scheduled assignment time is reached, I'm going to leave both of these options off because I don't want require user intervention in this case. Finally, I'm not concerned about embedded devices, so I'll uncheck that. I can now click Next to proceed. Finally, I have the option to determine how the software is distributed and loaded on the targeted endpoints. So I will tell those endpoints to actually download it from the distribution point and run it locally because I feel this will have the best chance of success in my environment. Finally, I have a couple of options here about allowing clients in the same subnet to acquire content from other clients in that subnet or to use clients as a fallback location should my distribution point become un unavailable. But for my example, these are not required. I can click Next to proceed. I can review the summary of actions that will be taken and click Next. And now my software has been deployed to the targeted collection, which contains just one machine.